own lives, how this applies to us, even as we walk as your people today. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. There are times in our life where it seems like it's difficult to be courageous and strong. Even in our world today, sometimes I think even as Christians, we have difficulty with living out our faith as God would have us. And so my hope is that as we begin this new series on Joshua, entitled Courage for Everyday People, you might be encouraged in your life, that you might be a courageous Christian, and that you might be strong in your faith. And that's partly what our desire is with this series as we head up for the next eight weeks. Some of us have had an opportunity to join a life group, and you'll be going through video series with regard to this. And then also, if, um, if you're coming each Sunday, or as you come each Sunday, we'll be looking and going through the book of Joshua together. God often places <clears throat> certain people in, pla- in certain places for an opportunity to speak truth in this world, to have godly strength and to have godly courage to change history or to stand up for what is right is not always easy. Rosa is a girl I'd like to tell you or a lady I'd like to tell you about who was one of these people. At an early age as she grew up, she never felt that she was inferior to anyone, even though the world told her so. She often had to cope with being degraded or humiliated in situations. And one day as she rode her bus home from work at the age of 42, she changed history. The driver demanded that all of the black passengers would clear the front rows because there was a white woman who wanted to sit down. Rosa decided that she would not comply. She would sit there. And this began one of the greatest civil rights movements in all of history. And probably she became one of the great civil rights advocates during that time. What happened that day, she says, had to do with her faith in God. It was her faith in God that gave her the courage to stand up for what is right. The year that this took place was 1955, and it began in Montgomery, Alabama. The woman's name was Rosa Parks. Many of you will know who she is. She started the Montgomery boy, bus boycott. And this led to 5,000 people meeting at Holt Street Baptist Church, where she, had, she, where she was a member. And it was from there that people began to boycott the buses and demanding that they would not have to move for white people. The question, I think, for us is, would I have the courage to do what Rosa did? In an interview, she wanted people to know where that courage came. From that historic day, she said this, People always say that I didn't give up my seat because I was tired. But that isn't true. I was not physically tired or any more tired than I usually was after ending a day at work. I was not old, although some people have this image of me being old. I was only 42. No, I was tired, but I was, what I was tired of was giving in. While there are accolades for her for what she has done in the media, many of them don't portray the reason why she was able to do what she did. She said the major factor in her boldness and her willingness to sit down that day was her Christian faith. She said, I would like my readers to know that I grew up and I had a strong spiritual background. I believed in my church and I believed in my faith that I had in Jesus Christ. That helps give me the strength and the courage to do what I did and to live as I did. In her book entitled Quiet Strength, she writes this, When I sat down on the bus that day, I had no idea that history was being made. I was only thinking about getting home. But I had made up my mind. After so many years of being a victim of this mistreatment of my people and my people had to suffer, not giving up my seat and whatever I had to do face afterwards was actually not that important. I did not feel any fear while I was sitting there. I felt the Lord would give me the strength to endure whatever I had to face. It was time for someone to stand, or in my case, to sit. So I refused to move. My belief is that, as Rosa speaks here, where she got the strength to do what she needed to do, the Lord gave her that ability. It was actually the very presence of God that gives us the ability to have strength and courage in life. It says this in 1 Joshua 1.9, Have I not commanded you, as God speaks to Joshua, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. 
As we are and as we live our lives as Christians today, I think our hope is not only that we would be strong and courageous Christians, but also that our children would be as well. That somehow we could teach them that the key to life is this passage. The key to life is to be strong and courageous because the Lord your God is with you. It is the very presence of God that gives us strength and gives us courage in life. That is what's important to remember. That is key. So even as as we enter into the book of Joshua, we see here Joshua, who is a man probably in his 60s or 70s. He's not a young man anymore. Joshua and Caleb are the only two of this generation that have existed that have now been able to come to the edge of the promised land again. If you remember the story of what occurred 40 years prior to this, Moses brings the Israelites out of slavery and brings them to the edge of the promised land. And they send 12 Different spies, or they send 12 spies into the promised land that God had promised the people. At this point, 10 of them come back and say, you know what, we can't beat these people. They're too big and they have too many fortified cities. There's no way that we can win this war. We're all going to die at their hands. There are only two of those spies who say, no, we can take it. And that's Joshua and that's Caleb. God then punishes the people and he says, you're going to have to roam the desert for 40 years. It's not that they're lost, it's just they have to wait out 40 years. Do you know why they wait 40 years? So that the entire generation who did not have faith would die out. Anyone over the age of 20 from that point would die in the desert, God promises. And there's only two people, two, who live past that age. It's Caleb and it's Joshua. And Joshua now is the leader. He gets tapped to be the leader. Moses dies. And here again, once again, 40 years later, they stand on the edge of the promised land. What are the people going to do? So Moses says to Joshua, be strong and courageous. He says this in Deuteronomy twice. God speaks to Joshua in the book of Deuteronomy and says to be strong and courageous. In De- Deuteronomy 31, 7 to 8, Moses, is summoned, Moses summoned Joshua and said to him, in the presence of all of the people, he reminds them in front of all of the people, be strong and courageous for you must go with this people into the land the Lord swore to your fathers to give them and you must divide it among them as their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Do not be afraid or be discouraged. The Lord speaks directly to Joshua in Deuteronomy 31, 23. The Lord gave this command to Joshua, son of Nun. Be strong and courageous, for you will bring the Israelites into the land that I have promised them on oath, and I myself will be with you. God reminds him this again in for the first chapter of Joshua. If you turn to Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 to 9, three times. Here, God reminds him to be strong and courageous. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them, to the Israelites. I will give them, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend to the deserts of Lebanon, And from the great river, the Euphrates, and all the Hittite country to the great sea on the west, no one will be able to stand against you. You, all of your days of your life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead this people to inherit the land that I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey the law my servant Moses gave you. And do not turn to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let the book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate it on day and night, so that you'll be careful to do everything that is in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified, do not be discouraged, or the Lord of your or the Lord your God will be with you, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Over and over again it is proclaimed in the scriptures, be strong and courageous. Why? Because the Lord God is with you wherever you go. There are three things here in this verse, in this chapter, um, chapter one. 
He begins by saying, be strong and courageous because there is a promise that you need to fulfill. The promise was given by God, but the fulfillment of it will happen with Joshua and his people. That first promise was given to Abraham. Do you remember the story of Abraham where he stands under the stars in the sky and he sees the sand on the seashore? The promise there is God will make him into a great nation. And through that nation, the world will be blessed. That there will be that many people who are part of Abraham's family. And this is where we get to the situation. He's standing at that moment when he hears the promise that God will give him this land. And this is the land that the Israelites are about to enter. God promises him. He says, be strong and courageous because you're going to fulfill this promise that I made to Abraham more than 400 years ago after this people have been into slavery. He then reminds him, be strong and courageous. And while you're doing this, remember the word that God has given you as he gave to the prophet Moses. Right? So remember the words that Moses spoke to you. Meditate, them, meditate on them every day and every night. Meditate them and know the word of God so that you don't go to the right or to the left, but you do what God commands. And then thirdly, he reminds him to be strong and courageous. Why? Because God is present with him. It is God who will make this happen. It, will, it is God who will fight those battles. Those are the things that we learn here. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, he says in verse 9. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So the question then is, if this is the people who is entering into the promised land, how then do we look at this and apply this in our own lives? Has anyone ever, have you ever held on to this verse yourself and said, you know, do you, ever, do you have this hanging anywhere in your home? Have you ever, when you were growing up, did you ever hear this verse when you had to do something difficult? No one has ever heard this verse before. It's a good thing we're preaching on this one. But have you ever heard this verse? Sometimes it's, it's, it's on your walls. It's your screensaver on your computer. It's, it's, it's there, right? It's there as a reminder to be strong and courageous because the Lord your God is with you. And this is key for us as Christians as well because this also applies to our lives, right? As Christians, we are called also to be strong and courageous. But here where you have Joshua entering into a promised land and he has to take over and defeat nations and there is fear for their lives, right? They stand on the, prep, prep, the, they stand on the edge of the promised land and they're ready to, to enter in. But they have to go through wars and battles. It's not the reason why God tells Joshua seven different times to be strong and courageous is not that he's a coward. He's already helped lead these people in the desert for 40 years. But it's because it's meant to be a reminder even to us. You see, as Christians, we have a Joshua as well. We have a better Joshua than the Joshua in the Old Testament. Some of you are like, well, who's our Joshua? Who brings us into the promised land? Right? Does everyone know here that the name Jesus is the Greek version of Joshua? Mary would have called Jesus Joshua, Yeshua. That's the Hebrew version, right? So the name Joshua means God saves, right? The Lord saves, that's what it means. Jesus, his mom, Mary, wouldn't call him Jesus because that's the Greek alliteration of the Hebrew word for Joshua. So why is it that our Savior carries the same name as the one in the Old Testament who brought them into the promised land, who who helped bring them out of slavery. There is a foreshadowing that goes into the Old Testament that speaks very much of what is about to happen in the New Testament. There's a reason why the angel comes to Joseph and says, name him Joshua, name him Jesus. It's because his name carries the same. He saves. Does he save us from slavery? Most definitely he slaves, saves us from the, he saves us from the slavery of sin. When Christ dies on the cross, he slaves us from, saves us from a greater slavery than just being oppressed by people. He slaves us, saves us from the suppression of sin. Sin suppresses us in our lives, and Jesus frees us from that. He gives us the ability, by being present with us in his Holy Spirit, that you and I might come to life and be able to defeat the sin that is in our life. This is how you know people are Christians, because the very presence of God is with them. Our Joshua brings us to a promised land, and it's a better promised land than just the promised land of milk and honey. The promised land that he brings us to is eternal life. 
right? He brings us into the kingdom of God. We're there. They were just attacking one nation. You and I as Christians are called to attack the entire world, right? This is the command of Christ. And I don't mean with sword and shield, even though spiritually we have a sword and shield. We're not talking about we don't take this world by force, but there is an ongoing battle that happens for the Christian, the kingdom of God against the kingdom of this world. This is why when Jesus calls us as Christians, and he brings his disciples after he's been raised from the dead, he says this to them in Matthew 28. Jesus came to them and said, all authority, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. So who has all authority in heaven and earth? Jesus. He claims it. He makes the statement about it. How do we know that he has all authority? Because he has authority over both sin and death. How do you know that? He rose from the grave. All authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, Christian, you, therefore, all of you, disciples, therefore, Christians, go and make disciples of where? Of all the nations. You and I are called to go to all of the nations and to make disciples. The battle is still going on. The kingdom of God is still increasing. How do you make the disciples? You baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and teach them, teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And then he says this, and surely I am with you always. How long? To the very end of the age. Again, you see the very same things that are promised to Joshua here. You have the promise. Well, what is the promise? The promise that is given is that all authority on heaven and earth is given to Christ. Therefore, the whole world is now available to us as Christians so that we go into all the world and proclaim Christ. Our battle, the kingdom of God, is growing. Do you remember how the kingdom of God started? Eleven men. I don't have another finger. Eleven men. On that day, stand there, and Christ gives them this authority. He says, you go into all the world and you make disciples. Eleven of them. How many of us are Christians? Even in, There's more than eleven of us in this room. Is the kingdom of God growing? It is. Amen. It continues to grow. How does it continue to grow? By, therefore, you make disciples of all the nations. We baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we teach them to obey everything that is commanded. Everything Christ commanded is the word. Be strong and courageous, he says to, to Joshua. Be strong and courageous and remember the words of Moses and the law. Remember the word of God, Christian. Stay close to it. Don't veer from it. Stay on it. Follow the commands of Christ. Not only do we follow the commands of Christ, but we teach the commands of Christ. That's how we make disciples. Baptize and teach them the commands. And then finally, in that verse 9, he says, Be strong and courageous because I am with you wherever you go. For the Christian, is it not true that God is with us present wherever we go? The Holy Spirit dwells in us. Every time, every Monday morning, you get up and you're late for your meeting and you're rushing to the meeting, God is there with you. Every time you go to school and you walk through those doors, God is present with you. When you go to bed at night, God is present with you. Every minute of every day, of every hour, of every month, of every year, God is present with you. Be strong and courageous so that we might do the very work of the kingdom, so that the world might know who Christ is. That's the job of us. That's where our Joshua leads us, because we proclaim the promised land to others. We tell others about the freedom that they can receive from sin that is found in Jesus Christ, because it's by the work of Christ on the cross, his death on the cross, that pays for our sin. This is why we need to be strong and courageous, because we have a life and death message that this world needs to hear. This battle of the kingdom of Satan versus the kingdom of Jesus, which then applies to our lives, is what you and I are all about. We need to be strong and courageous to do what we need to do. If we no longer proclaim the gospel, then what ends up happening is we get a world like we have out there today. Tell me that our world is not a changing world. Tell me that there is not evil in this world. Few things like, there is probably no time in my life where I have seen the world as evil as it is now. Is that true? 
it's probably because we haven't been strong and courageous in proclaiming the gospel. Some of that rests on us, but there is this extraordinarily dark, it seems extraordinarily dark out there. There is grotesque immorality that goes around. There is hatred of God and his message. There is hatred of the gospel. Even if you proclaim it, you might be persecuted by friends or family or even people that you don't know. Why? Because you are a Christian. If they find out you're a Christian, they may even persecute you for that. We are not to sit around and wait for the, for the to, to be sitting here waiting for the second coming of Christ and not be active. You can't just sit there and go, I'm just, you know what, it looks like the end is coming near, so I'm just going to sit around and wait. That should cause us to be even more proactive, right? That should cause us to be even more diligent in what we are called to do. We are to be strong and courageous moving forward. We know that God is with us. We proclaim the commands of Christ. We know that we live in troubled times, but in some ways this is also an opportunity because there has never been, or maybe throughout history in the first century, but there, there really is a great opportunity for us to continue to proclaim the gospel to, to others, to teach them the commands of Christ, to tell them about the promise of freedom that is offered to him. And we remember the promises that God has given us. Christ says, I will be with you wherever you go. We know that he loves us and that we are his children. He, we know that he hears our prayers. We know if we have anxiety or difficulty, we can go to him. God gives us courage and he helps us and he forgives us for our sins. And these are the things that we proclaim to others. We are led by a better Joshua, one that is willing to die for his people. His name is Jesus and what he teaches is that he is the one who saves. He promises us a day of rest, but now is not that day. We have peace that passes all understanding. We will go through difficult times. We might go through suffering. We might go through persecution, as Peter says. We might suffer for a little while. For one day, we will see the glory of Christ. One day, we will be brought into his rest and receive that. But today is not that day. We continue to do what he asks us to do. We are promised a promised land. We are promised that as we enter into that promised land, those are the things that we look forward to. We, that gives us strength. That gives us courage. We know that the promise will be fulfilled. Why? Because Christ is trustworthy. And what gives us strength to do what we need to do, what gives us the reason why we do what we do, is because Christ dwells in us, that his Holy Spirit is in us, which means we have the ability to know that the presence of God is with us, and we have the ability to do what he has called us to do. All authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, what do you do? We've got a promised land that we are heading toward. We want to take as many people with us. Amen? That's our job. That's our task. That's why when you look at the book of Joshua, you can see how Christ just mirrors that in so many ways in the battles that are going to take place, in the things that you and I might have to deal with, in the difficulty. But he intercedes for his people and he works things out for the good of those who love him. He is where his people are. He is present where his people are. And we have the resurrected power of Jesus Christ living in us. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. Whether we live or whether we die, Christ will walk us through that valley of the shadow of death. And we will make it to the promised land. That doesn't mean that we don't have something to do now. We work hard to advance the kingdom of Christ wherever we currently are and however we currently live. So the question for us at the end of the day and the statement by God then is, do I believe the promise? Right? The promise is there is something that needs to be fulfilled here. We are going into this promised land. Do we believe that we should be strong and courageous to do that? Do we teach the commands of Christ to others? Sometimes we even are un. Sometimes we even are fearful to teach the very things of Jesus to our own children. That should, there should be nothing that stops us from teaching this, the commands of Christ to Jesus, of Jesus to our own children and to our grandchildren. We need to be strong and courageous in this. Even if we can go to one person and bring them along with us to meet Jesus so that they too can enter into the promised land, we have advanced the kingdom. Right? The kingdom now knows. Even if there's a one more thing that we can do to advance the kingdom, that's it. And what gives us the strength? What makes us courageous? It is because Christ is present with us. That's why he gave us his Holy Spirit. And that's why we live. That's our purpose in life. 
It's not just getting up and going to work every morning, but the very presence of God dwells with us, and that gives us strength and courage to do what Jesus commanded us. Let's pray together. Lord, you are the light of our lives and the salvation for, for our souls. Lord, you give us strength and you give us courage to do the things that you would have us do. Lord, we don't stand on the edge of a, of a land that we see with our eyes, but Lord, the kingdom of God is advancing and Lord, we are called to be part of that. And so we are called to be strong and courageous that all authority on heaven and earth has been given to Christ and we are to go and to make disciples. That we are to baptize and we are to teach them the commands of the Christ and we are to go into all of the nations and do this. And Lord, this is what you've called your people to do. And so Lord, give us strength and courage to do what you've asked. Lord, remind us of our mission and of our goal and our task. And Lord, even when it seems like we're up against odds that are against us, Lord, may we just have faith to know that you are going to make that happen, that you are going to to bring us through difficult times. If we face persecution or hardships from our life and from, you know, family members or workers or people at school, Lord, may we just recognize that you are with us always and that we don't fear anything because you are present in our lives. May that be something that we hold on to every day. May we be people who are strong and courageous to stand up for what is right 